Hello and welcome to Africa Fe, the broadcast that aims at promoting knowledge on African news and African organization. Today, we're going to talk about the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. But before that, let's take a look at this organization. Established by the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations in 1958, as one of the UN's five regional commissions, the Economic Commission for Africa's mandate is to promote the economic and social development of its member states, foster intra-regional integration, and promote international cooperation for Africa's development. Made up of 54 member states and playing a dual role as a regional arm of the UN and as a key component of the African institutional landscape, the ECA is well positioned to make unique contributions to address the continent's development challenges. Its headquarters are in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The contribution by the ECA to the task of carrying forward the 2030 Agenda and Agenda 2063 is centered on the Commission's three core functions, namely its convening function, its function as a think tank, and its operational function. The ECA's mission is to deliver ideas and actions for an empowered and transformed Africa, informed by the 2030 Agenda and Agenda 2063. Hello and welcome to Africa Fe, the broadcast that aims at presenting African institutions. Today, I am delighted to be hosting uh, Mr. Jalal Abdel Latif, Senior Fellow at the Policy Center for the New South and, social, and Senior Social Policy Advisor at the UN ECA, uh, to talk about the same commission. Mr. Abdel Latif, I'm very happy to, uh, to be uh, having this conversation today with you. As someone who works for the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, could you briefly explain to our audience what is this commission, what are its main objectives, uh, how uh, it was created? Thank you, Nihal, for having me. Yes, you correctly said I'm a non-resident fellow here, as well as I'm a senior social advisor to NEC. Well, the UN Economic Commission for Africa was established in 1958 by uh, what you call UN Social Economic Council. It is supposed to be one of the five regional commissions globally. The other ones being the one in, uh, in Lebanon, in Geneva, and you know, when this one is in Africa. So it was, uh, it was headquartered, it decided to be headquartered in Addis Ababa. It is mandate is basically to assist member states in their economic and social development. Uh, and also we assist the continent in having uh, a, a, well, effective international cooperation. We also promote uh, collaboration among member states. So, but it has a core function, three core functions. One we call it the convening function, the think tank function and the, uh, the uh, technical cooperation advisory function. In the convening function, we basically, we bring in a global agenda that impacts their continent, transboundary, like said, example, migration, climate change, what have you, so have an African common position. We basically, uh, we are intergovernmental organization every year in March, our ministers of finance and planning, the African Minister of Finance planning, get together and we, we serve that, that congregation. In that, we present our new ideas, resolutions, and outcome documents. That's what you call the convening function. The second one is the think tank function. So now we have what you call re redesigned ourselves to serve like a think tank function, basically becoming uh, 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 analyzing, uh, researching, and providing alternative policy options for member states. That's largely what we do. And the last one, what you call advisory services. For each country, according to their demand, their request, we go to missions to countries and assist them if they want anything to do on climate change, on economic governance, or illicit financial flow, or digitization, on migration, we do services like myself. I'm a specialist in, in govern, political governance, civil society, and peace and security. It in that, within that area, I go and service member states. In a nutshell, this is what it does. It has an over 1,000 staff, international, national, 
professional and support staff is big, it's huge. Yes, you know, it's UN, I can tell with yeah, a thousand so, uh, people. So basically in a nutshell, but lately we are really fostering regional, we're pushing a lot of regional integration, regional cooperation. We also focus with uh, assisting the African Union. Our secretariat is led by executive secretary, who is also under secretary general for the UN. Her name is Ms. Vera Songwe, and she is ninth executive secretary servicing the, Africa, the, the Economic Commission for Africa. In a short, this is what basically I did. Thank you for uh, this uh, very short, yes, very thorough uh, explanation of what the UNECA does. So touching upon this regional integration, which is a pillar of the UNECA, I would like to ask you, how does the UNECA uh, help uh, member states in this, in this aspect, in regional integration, in light of the recent operationalization of the African uh, free trade area? Like I said, we have three functions, right? The think tank, the convening, and the uh, servicing. So in the think tank, we do a lot of analysis on African integration, doing the numbers, estimation, projection, and provide that kind of analysis to member states, to the African Union as well. And then we also organize a lot of seminars, training workshops, and also regarding how member states uh, can develop their national plan national implementation plan on the African Free uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. And then if they, if they need a specific services, we also go to countries to help them. Let me start to step back and talk to you about a little bit about the, uh, the FCA itself. You know, the founding fathers of the African Organization of the African Union dreamed about a commonwealth. Yes, you know, uh, this is a long time, I think you're your king was also part of this uh, vision. But the story of creating a single market really started in, in Abuja in 1991. In 1991, there was, the, by then it was an organization of Africa, OAU, or Organization of African Unity. The, uh, the mem nation state decided to create a roadmap to bring a single market to the continent. At the same time, the African uh, ministers of Trade formally agreed to create, establish Commonwealth. It took over 20 years to this ambition and vision to culminate. So what has happened is uh, the, the AU heads of state committed the establishment of AFCFTA in 1912. Then the negotiation started in 2015. It was in uh, extraordinary summit happened in March 2018 in Kigali, Rwanda, that 44 states, nation states, signed agreement for the FCFTA. They signed the agreement and the declaration. So it's basically launched. But the rule says it has a number of countries required to come into force. So they needed 22 countries to ratify, meaning you go to their own country, go to the parliament, go to ratification, and then depositing the agreement there. So by 2000, May 2019, I think we had, there were enough members, it was coming to full force. Finally, after many years and of talking about years, this. After many years, full force. <laughs> so what is this animal? What is an instrument? I mean, the FCFTA, I, for me, is, uh, is a global, a game changer globally, as well as for Africa as well. Uh, it is the single largest market globally after WTO. It will bring over 1.3 billion population connected. It is an open market for goods and services. So this is what it is bringing to the global economy. According to um, some estimates, I mean the UNECA estimates that the in, by having uh, the FCFTA, the inter-Africa trade will increase by over 50%, creating billions of dollars. There are not, different numbers people are throwing around, but I'm using ECS numbers. To be specific, for example, the immediate benefit for this, if fully implemented, is the transportation sector. Uh, if fully implemented, the African transport sector Will has a potential to increase by 50%. That's huge, that's significant. Meaning 
if you open up this market, it means you're talking about railways, roads, air transport, air passengers. Then to give you another estimate is, is a very recent estimate, is a professor in the US uh, articulated, it says, the AFCFTA will bring a combined business is, is con consumer spending close over $6.7 trillion in 2050, and over $16.7 trillion in 2070 is huge. Again, the World Bank estimates, if this is also implemented, close to 30 million African population who, li who live in extreme poverty will be lifted. And also, close to 68 million population will have in more income, who are just living above poverty line, they increase their income. Then continue, then IMF, what does IMF say about this? It says, this is great news, it will bring a good labor market, which will increase. There will be efficiency of gains in economy. There will be efficient production. More importantly, if this happens, overall ranking of African global competitive index will increase. So this is really a major impact. This is, is huge, but again, uh, that is, uh, but specifically what we do is member countries write to us to help them how to implement, or what you call, in domesticate the implementation itself. I guess the FCA is a great news for Morocco, yeah. the Kingdom of Morocco, because you guys have so, you know, huge banking sector in West Africa. And also, you know, Air Morocco is also very globally, very connected. So this is a, you can see immediate benefit for the Kingdom of Morocco. Yes, for sure. Uh, well. Talking about uh, the challenges and also this hope for the AFCFTA that how it's going to, uh, to lift millions of people out of poverty, it's going to make Africa rise economically. I would like to ask you, uh, and also in light of the conversations uh, we've heard during the African Peace and Security Conference organized by the Policy Center for the New South, uh, I would like to ask you, as uh, a, represent a representative of the UNECA, what are the main challenges for you, uh, since you work with member states, since you provide advice to them, uh, you do research on this, what are the main challenges you think are uh, impacting Africa for its regional uh, integration to get into deeply uh, linked uh, countries? Basically, you have 54 countries, it's a big number, from a small nation, small in population, and big like Nigeria and Ethiopia and, in, in, and Egypt. That's the, this, the scale is different. Second, not all the economies in the continent are have the same level of growth or level of even understanding how to be globally competitive. So some some push for radical transformation, some do gradual uh, transformation, some emphasize agriculture, some emphasize mining. So you have different nations that have different emphasis, depending on their uh, natural resources and uh, their location. The main challenge as a staff is basically, is, is, it is a vast continent. It also, there's huge needs in everything call it gender sensitive program, talk about youth employment, talk about digitization, go migration uh, regulation. And now so food security as food well. Food security, <laughs> Russia and Ukraine war. And climate uh, change effect, climate change, as you stated. Climate change, indeed. it's you know, so the nexus between climate change and conflict. Then most importantly from the area I'm much more interested, we have significant number of countries who are in, in conflict. In these conflict countries, the largest number of population who are poor in Africa live in countries in conflict. Second, countries who have very vulnerable structures that they, they cannot absorb shocks, either natural or global. So we have a couple of countries, so not all countries in the continent are stable enough like Morocco and have much more stabilize long-term growth. And so the differentiation in the African economy is a big challenge. 
I'm not an economist, but I, I work in economic commercial, but I do more, more on the political uh, economy of the, the, the side of the, uh, 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 the continent. Thank you, Mr. Abdelatif, for this very insightful uh, conversation in which we heard more and learned more about the UNECA, the challenges it encounters, and how to increase the, the regional integration of our continent. You can learn more about African institutions and their impact visiting the website of the Policy Center for the New South, policycenter.ma, and see you soon in one of the episodes of Africa Fe. Yeah.